Happy Pride Month, everyone, or as it's called at Mike Pence's house, June. Pride is a celebration of queerness, acceptance, and club remixes you can actually dance to. And today, I'm here at RuPaul's private pool to tell you how Pride Month came to be. Because just like all queer people, June has a coming out story of its own. You could say Pride's roots go back to the 60s with Philly's Reminder Day pickets. Reminder Day was like the precursor to what Pride is now, in the same way that Madonna was the precursor to Lady Gaga. And if you don't get that reference, you should probably stop watching now because this is a Pride segment and you're a terrible ally. The 60s also saw protests all over America, like the Black Cat Tavern Riot in LA and a protest at the White House demanding equal employment opportunities for gay people. That's right, it used to be legal to fire people just for being gay, which makes no sense. Who you have sex with should have no bearing on whether you get to keep your job, unless you do it on the copy machine. Well known fact, that is how most paper jams get started. I learned the hard way. But then of course came Stonewall in 69, when police raided a gay bar in New York City called the Stonewall Inn, and the queer community fought back. It was such a significant moment in America's gay rights movement that to this day, that whole block is now a historic site visited by people from all over the world. The only way that corner of Christopher Street would attract more gay people is if Britney had a residency there. Stonewall was the big turning point. Though they still face so much discrimination, the LGBTQ community finally felt empowered enough to hold big public celebrations. The first ever official gay pride parade was held in Chicago in 1970. But one day later, New York held an entire Pride Week. During this seven-day celebration, the community marched from the village to Central Park with slogans like, gay, gay, all the way, and gay power. Which isn't just a good slogan, it's also the energy source that keeps the lights running on Broadway. Of course, we can't talk about pride without talking about the symbol of it. No, not your grandparents Googling what is scissoring. I'm talking about the rainbow flag, which was designed in 1978 by Gilbert Baker. He called himself the Gay Betsy Ross, which makes sense. Not only did they both design iconic flags, but they also belonged to communities where wigs were very popular. One of the coolest things about Gilbert Baker was that he refused to trademark the pride flag. He wanted everyone to be able to share it and reinterpret it, which is why today, the flag has become as fluid as sexuality itself. By the time we reached the 80s, the AIDS crisis came to the forefront and pride took on a new mission. It wasn't just about visibility and acceptance, it was about destigmatizing and promoting public health, which was especially important because the federal government pretty much just pretended AIDS didn't exist, like what Tom Hanks does with Chet. Once we made it to the 90s, Pride was even more mainstream than ever before, and in 1999, President Bill Clinton signed the executive order officially recognizing June as Pride Month for the first time. Yeah, if two people of the same gender wanted to have sexual relations, that was fine with him, even if he didn't totally understand the definition of sexual relations. I did not have. Clinton's executive order referred to June as Gay and Lesbian Pride Month. Then in 2009, President Obama changed it to Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month. Then President Trump dialed it back a little and just called it LGBT Pride Month, which makes sense. No big words and it's less scary for Mike Pence. But these days, the Biden administration extended the name again to Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Queer Pride Month, making it, as of now, the only thing that's been built back better. But whatever you call it, Pride has truly become a global phenomenon. It's celebrated everywhere. Manila, South Africa, Brazil, Madrid. Pride's gone to so many places. If it had an Instagram, you'd have to mute their stories. We get it, Pride. You had fun in Spain. Stop making the rest of us feel so boring. So this month, don't forget where Pride came from and all the people who fought to make it a reality. The LGBTQ community still faces many challenges, but it's also experienced a lot of progress. And if you ask me, that's worth celebrating. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, shit. RuPaul's back from vacation early.